So my latest publication is about uh, foreign banks and domestic banks and how is it feasible for foreign banks to penetrate new uh, and developing markets and to be able to lend to every customer. Because usually if you have a foreign bank entering a new market, what they face is sort of information asymmetries. What does it mean is basically they do not know the local culture, they do not know the borrowers that are in these markets, they do not have certain information about those borrowers because in these developing markets they do not have uh, reliable financial statements or even audited financial statements and even if they have those they are very limited and not usable so when uh, foreign banks come in they face sort of those information asymmetries they don't know the borrower pool uh, on the other end you have those domestic banks that are there that are actually able to lend to those small borrowers uh, and the question is what do then domestic uh, foreign banks do right so what we show in this paper, and this is sort of more on this identification side, which is right now very uh, sort of prominent in the literature, is to show that what happens if you have even the same guy, so the same firm in the same month that receives a loan on the one hand from a domestic uh, bank and on the other hand from a foreign bank, what you find is that they, uh, the same guy gets completely different contract terms, which is on the f first very surprising, right? Why the same guy was it's the credit worthiness is not different it's the same guy why would he get different contract terms and from this because basically we control for any borrower heterogeneity because it's the same guy everything must be the same so the only thing that uh, can be driving those differences in contract term has to be sort of the organizational stru structure or the ownership structure of the banks and we find basically that the same borrower receives uh, is much more likely, 28 percentage points more likely to pledge collateral with a foreign bank and sort of has three month shorter maturities with a foreign bank, but at the same time gets um, around 9% uh, lower interest rates. So, I mean, it's like a, it's a nice menu. On the one hand, he pays less interest rates, but then he has to pledge this collateral, let's say this heavy machinery, and then he gets a loan only for a year. Whereas with a foreign domestic bank, which knows this customer, the domestic bank says, okay, you don't have to pledge collateral with me. I can give you a loan for two years, but at the same time, I will require a much higher interest rate because I know you better and because you cannot credibly signal to this foreign bank that you're actually a good customer. But when they price loans, the foreign bank is much more interested to know, to see whether the customer pledges collateral or um, um, has a high credit score and then he's able to get a lower interest rate right whereas you have when you have a domestic bank which cares about the relationship with the customer you might you actually also see in the data if uh, the bank knows the customer well meaning they have a long relationship so there have been already several loans issued to this particular firm or that um, the bank has sort of several products with this firm you find that these relationship characteristics that we call that they have some previous relationship to this loan also lead to lower um, interest rates uh, in the case of domestic banks. And again, a bit similar um, or in line with the literature is what we find is basically that this holds, is, holds more or is more true if you look at small customers. So it is more likely that you have a domestic bank that gives out a loan for a small customer and then he receives lower interest rates uh, because they know they're much better. Whereas on the other hand, if you have this foreign bank that has more transparent and large customers for which they have credit ratings and collateral available and once those firms show that the quality is high of the collateral and they have a high credit score, they will get also lower interest rates. You have foreign banks that have information asymmetries, but where do this information asymmetries arise? Why do they do not know the market? And we call them sort of distance constraints. And what do we mean by that is basically uh, that on the one hand, you have geographical um, distances. So you have the foreign bank being um, having a headquarter too far away, having organizational distances, which I already mentioned, and then cultural distances, they do not know the culture, they might be under a different legal framework, and basically what 
might happen in the end is that it might lead to worse or better credit outcomes for different types of customers. And we find so far it doesn't lead necessarily to worse credit outcomes, it just leads to different types of contract terms. What's really interesting and we really liked about this paper is that we're not only able to see that we have those foreign versus domestic banks, we can also see whether the foreign bank is a branch or a subsidiary. And what, what is different between those two is basically a subsidiary is a previous domestic bank that has been just simply taken over by a foreign bank. So meaning there is some knowledge already in this uh, bank that is present from the past when it was still a domestic bank, so it might use this. Whereas when you have branches, meaning the, the form bank comes in and then it opens up a branch, then they have to build their sort of capital, their informational capital over time, right? And when we look at our specific country, what we see is that uh, we look at the time when they are both of them already present. It's not when they enter, but we see we have in this particular period, we have both branches and subsidiaries present. And what we find is that if you have a branch which is sort of much further, with, which is basically as a much steeper organization structure, meaning you have the branch in this particular country, but then you have the headquarters further away, you find those um, mechanisms to be even more at work or being more severe for those uh, um, branches. That is, you find that they high, uh, ask for even more collateral and led at even shorter contract terms compared to foreign subsidiaries who are sort of more accustomed to this market. And the only thing that differs for them is that they have sort of a new CEO and a new manager and a new sort of bigger bank that sort of took them over, but still they have their knowledge sort of there, right? And um, what happens over time, surprisingly, is then that the foreign branches become more similar uh, to foreign subsidiaries Whereas foreign subsidiaries become more similar to foreign branches because this organization structure at certain points sort of kicks in also for sub, uh, foreign subsidiaries, whereas foreign branches over time learn something about this market and sort of lower than the, the, their collateral requirements and start to give out longer, longer maturity loans. Everyone gets a loan, but what you care in the end about is uh, is it an efficient technology or lending technology banks apply, right? Is it something where they can actually generate income or is it something that if they sh um, lend at um, short maturities with collateral, does it actually lead to less non-performance, meaning is it less likely that the f this borrower defaults, meaning he goes uh, overdue? And <clears throat> what we, we find is actually when um, foreign banks stick to these disciplining tools um, with SFA lending and shorter maturities, they are not worse off, meaning they can still um, get a higher rent, so they can still sort of get rents and have a margin they extract from those borrowers, that, so they gain something on those loans. And at the same time, they do not have uh, more often some overdue or delinquencies of loans compared to domestic banks. But once sort of they do not stick to this typical design, meaning that suddenly they give out loans without collateral and at longer maturities, then we're back in this sort of inefficiency problem where you actually find that they are more likely to have uh, loans that go overdue and basically end up with the worst loan portfolio. So it shows us that the result of efficient foreign banks is only true if they actually stick to their disciplining tool, their, their de basically lending mechanism. And once they deviate from it, you might end up with inefficient outcomes, which no one, nobody wants, which is neither good for the bank or for the customer. Different to what literature has found so far is that foreign banks can actually come in and can actually uh, penetrate these markets, meaning that they can also lend to small and medium-sized enterprises which we call small or more opaque borrowers, and not just to those transparent big customers that are even maybe foreign that are present in those markets, they can actually lend to the same clientele as uh, domestic banks, meaning they do not sort of cream the, uh, skim the cream of the best borrowers, right? What they do is actually they, they can lend to both, meaning it should be actually good for developing markets that foreign banks come in. So the results of um, this paper 
are not just applicable to this tiny country we look at, which is uh, Bolivia, which you might first say, okay, who cares about Bolivia? We have no idea where this country is situated. But surprisingly, what you find is that in research, and especially in banking research, you can have like a case study of this um, small country. And then uh, what you do is like you extrapolate those results and look at different com and other countries that either have a similar setting like Bolivia, for example, Brazil, which is also like a small country with a weak institutional framework. Or you look at, for example, U.S., which is a more developed market. And in, when we were revising the paper, what we actually did is we tried to replicate those results also for other countries. So we saw now we have this particular problem of foreign banks facing information asymmetries uh, because, uh, particularly in developing markets, because we have this weak institutional framework. Um, is it still the case in Brazil, which is which also has this in weak institutional framework being a developing country, and is it true also for US? So what we did for US, for example, we looked at Citibank, which is also present in Bolivia as a foreign bank, and there we see that Citibank basically gives out um, this higher, more collateralized loans and shorter maturities. Um, but is it that Citibank in general is like this, also in its own country, or is it the result we actually find only when foreign bank X as a uh, foreign bank then it behaves like this. So we compare basically Citibank when it acts in US and gives out loans in US where it is a domestic bank to other domestic banks. And we find that there are no differences in uh, neither interest rates, collateral maturities, indicating that it's not a particular Citibank effect, that it is Citibank that always basically gives out loans at, with this particular disciplining tools. It is actually an effect that once it acts as a foreign bank, it uh, resource to these particular um, techniques to be able to penetrate those markets. And at the same time, when we look at another bank from Brazil that is also um, active in Bolivia, there we find again that there are no particular differences when it acts as a, a domestic bank. And on top of that, what we find is that when we compare uh, foreign banks in Brazil to domestic banks, private domestic banks in Brazil, we find similar results as in Bolivia. This is something everyone cares about, especially in economics, about welfare implications. Does it actually help to have those foreign banks in the end? Does it lead, on the one hand, to more credit availability of smaller customers? Because, of course, you want that market growth, that there's more lending to, uh, to SMEs that actually need that, that uh, usually make up more than uh, 20 to 40 percent of GDP. So you want those firms to receive more loans, being able to uh, use this, um, these uh, funds to invest in uh, new technologies, in uh, machinery, whatever it is, in the end to foster growth and basically to lead to a development of this whole uh, country and market. Uh, but the problem what uh, happens in this case is where we, we cannot really make welfare statements, but what we see is that foreign banks seem to have this one-sided lending. So when a firm comes to this foreign bank and wants to receive a loan, it sees, okay, I can only give, get this loan if I pledge collateral. So I only, if I give away this collateral and pledge it, only then I can get a loan, so I cannot use it for something else. And at the same time, the borrower also knows, or this small firm knows, I can only get a short-term loan for one year. So what do I do? Probably I, I will not use this money to make some long-term project and long-term investment, which actually might help my firm. I just use it maybe to repay some current bills I have and not actually something what you want to have. So you might have that borrowers that are able to receive loans for foreign banks, that they will focus on those pledgeable assets and short-term investments. And at the same time, borrowers that might not be able to receive those loans because they, they do not have collateral, for example, they should be sort of served by domestic banks, but you do not know whether domestic banks will do it because naturally these borrowers will be worse borrowers because they cannot show much for they do not have audited financial statements or that are not reliable even if they have them. They have no collateral. What can they show the domestic banks? So if domestic banks are able sort of to fill this need, then they might, um, of course, ask much higher borrowing costs, which is also not perfect for the firm. 
Uh, and the second thing which might happen that even new firms that enter those markets will also face these problems. And then you have sort of a shift of the borrowers to those short term investment strategies just with using some assets, which is not necessarily a good thing for um, credit markets. And what you want in the end is basically to create um, institutional framework that helps sort of firms, so either may help also domestic banks to give out uh, loans to those SMEs and also tell SMEs to have sort of this collateral and assets available to be able to receive maybe both types of loans. So in the end, I think it's sort of an ambivalent or not a perfect outcome whether foreign banks are helpful or not, but at least we can say that are, that they are there, they can give out loans to some customers and actually many customers that are also small, not just to large ones, but sort of the outcome, we can give some tentative implications, but we hope in the future to have better data to be able to say what happens in the end to credit availability in this market, to access to credit and to borrowing costs in this markets to tell a better story about whether foreign banks are helpful or not.